Hello and welcome to Indian Masterminds. I am Srajan Gerdonia and you are watching our weekly news bulletin, Bureaucracy This Week. From former RBI Governor's scathing comments, an innovative initiative in Nagpur and a civil servant inspired by the film Surivansham. Let's take a look at this week's news in the Civil Service Roundup. Former RBI Governor calls for urgent reform of India's civil services in his new book, just a mercenary notes from my life and career. Former Reserve Bank of India Governor Duvuri Subarao has delivered a pointed critique of India's civil services. He describes the once pristine steel frame of the Indian civil services as having rusted over time due to corruption, indifference and incompetence. Subarao emphasizes the necessity of restoring this foundational structure to its original integrity and efficiency. The term steel frame dates back to the British era referring to the Indian Civil Services or ICS as they were known back then. They were established to administer the subcontinent. Post-independence, it evolved into the IAS or Indian Administrative Services, intended to guide the nation's development and governance. Subarao, who has held various high-level roles, including Union Finance Secretary, argues that while IAS was once a model of competence and integrity, it has significantly deteriorated. Despite its current state, he advocates for reform rather than dismantling the system entirely. Subarao also addresses gender disparity within the IAS, urging that reforms should also aim to close this gap. The highly competitive annual civil services examination conducted by the UPSC selects candidates for the IAS, IFS and IPS and other key services through preliminary exams, mains exams and an interview phase. Adding to the discourse, economist Sanjeev Sanyal has recently sparked debate about the aspirations of Indian youth. During a podcast appearance, Sanyal, a member of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister or EACPM, suggested that young Indians should broaden their ambitions beyond civil services. He advocated for aspiring to high-profile entrepreneurial roles like those of Elon Musk or Mukesh Ambani instead of administrative positions. Forest fires in Uttarakhand accelerates melting of Himalayan glaciers. A massive forest fire recently ravaged seven districts in Uttarakhand, causing severe environmental repercussions. Although the fire was subdued within a few days, its adverse effects are now becoming apparent, particularly on the pristine Himalayan glaciers which have started melting rapidly. The amount of carbon in these glaciers have surged by two and a half times since the fire broke out. Dr. D.P. Doval, a former glacier scientist at the Vadia Institute, explained that the glaciers have become increasingly vulnerable to the carbon due to, the, due to air pollution. He highlighted that carbon particles, once heated, adhere to the glacier surface, accelerating the melting process. Black particles are excellent at absorbing the sun's rays and begin heating up and melting when present on the upper layer of the glaciers. The forest fires burned continuously across seven districts of Uttarakhand for about 22 days. During this period, approximately 1,450 hectares of forests were torched, with significant damage observed in areas such as the Rishi Ganga catchment of Chamoli. This incident underscores the broader impact of forest fires on the environment, particularly in vulnerable regions like the Himalayas. The increase in carbon deposits from the fires has exacerbated the melting of glaciers, posing a threat to the region's water sources and overall ecological balance. Odisha conducts elephant census after seven year gap. After a prolonged delay caused by factors including a cyclone and the COVID-19 pandemic, Odisha has commenced its much-awaited elephant census across 43 divisions from May 22 to May 24. The census, which utilizes the direct sighting method, aims to provide crucial data on the elephant population in the state. Forest officials have set up 1136 raised platforms called machans to facilitate the counting process. A mock headcount involving trained staff was conducted prior to the three-day uh, census exercise. 
All Odisha Elephant Estimation 2024 will utilize the direct count method with data collected from the from the machans, barracks, and watchtowers and other establishments set up by department officials. The collected data will undergo analysis at various levels before finalization. Regional Chief Conservator of Forest or RCCF highlighted the strategic placement of machans near water bodies and wet areas. Aided by the full moon on May 23rd, the last census in 2017 recorded 1976 elephants in Odisha, with a slight increase from 1954 to into 2015. Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife Sushant Nanda emphasized the importance of the census for effective management and understanding of breeding patterns. The census teams stationed at Machans, equipped with searchlights, cameras, and binoculars, worked in two shifts. The census results are crucial to containing man animal conflicts and providing insights into the elephant population's composition. Additionally, Odisha has initiated a leopard census using camera traps across 51 divisions, aiming to bolster wildlife management and conservation efforts in the state. Tripura High Court clears IAS officer of misconduct charges. The Tripura High Court has offered respite to Dr. Shailesh Kumar Yadav, a 2013 batch IAS officer and the current commissioner of Agartala Municipal Corporation. The court dropped charges of improper behavior and atrocities against Officer Yadav, stemming from his actions as the District Magistrate of West Tripura. The charges arose from raids conducted by Officer Yadav on two families who organized marriage ceremonies in violation of COVID-19 restrictions in April 2021. The raids, which attract widespread criticism after a video went viral on social media, promoted demands for punitive action against Officer Yadav from various quarters, including the All India Priests organizations. Following scrutiny of three separate inquiry reports by inquiry committees, the High Court, led by Chief Justice Aparesh Kumar Singh and Justice Arindam Lohr, uh, handed a clean sheet to Officer Yadav, despite the formation of multiple probe committees, including one compri comprising two IAS officers and another with retired judicial officer Subhash Shikdar. One of the reports could establish misconduct Bamdev Majumdar similarly failed to uh, substantiate allegations of Officer Yadav's misconduct in the marriage halls and illegal detention of women and children for violating COVID-19 curfew. This development provides a significant relief to Officer Yadav amidst the controversy surrounding his actions, highlighting the challenges faced by administrative officers in enforcing pandemic-related regulations. These were the news from this week. You can read all these news pieces in detail on our website. The link is in the description. Now let's move on to the story of the week in our next segment called The Impact Report. This week's story comes from Nagpur, where in an effort to bridge the gap in financial literacy among rural and tribal families in India, the Nagpur Zilla Parishad administration led by CEO, CEO Zilla Panchayat IAS officer Soumya Sharma has partnered with Swata Education Foundation and Zerodha to integrate financial literacy in school curriculums. This groundbreaking initiative aims to empower students fostering financial independence and a brighter future for generations to come. Promoting financial literacy at the grassroots, the program is designed with a four-pronged approach. It equips students in both primary and upper primary schools with essential financial knowledge focusing on practical skills for grade 5, 5th to 9th. The initiative aims to cultivate responsible money management, encouraging saving, investment and entrepreneurship. Enhancing teachers' capacity to effectively deliver financial education is also a priority. Implementation strategy, a well-defined implementation strategy underpins the program's success. Curriculum development. In collaboration with the District Institute of Education and Training, or DIET, uh, and partner organizations, a comprehensive grade-specific curriculum was developed. It covers topics like economic planning, savings, banking operations, loans and interest rates through fun, activity-based sessions. A two-tier approach was adopted initially. 200 super trainers received in-depth training who then trained all teachers handling grade 5 to 9 through multiple sessions and online support. The Vinoba app facilitated seamless communication 
and curriculum dissemination tracking progress and promoting a paperless approach train teachers conducted engaging discussions using educational materials and activities the program also established student run savings banks with schools giving students hands on experience with banking transactions shaping financially savvy young minds the program has had a significant impact assessments across hundreds of schools with over 15000 participants showed remarkable improvements in financial literacy within a year student run banks provided practical banking experience with over 130 students at zilla parishad upper primary school mahalgaon depositing approximately 60000 rupees This initiative not only benefited students but also engaged parents enhancing the community's overall financial understanding. The program's success has garnered enthusiastic participation across Nagpur district paving the way for expansion to other districts. This initiative significantly contributes to the holistic development of students in rural zila parishad schools enabling them to compete with their urban counterpart and consider careers in banking and the stock market. Now let's move on to the UPSC story of the week. In our next segment, the budding bureaucrat. In the 1999 film Suryavansham, a powerful scene where a young woman returns to her village as a respected district collector inspired Rahul Sharma to pursue a career in public service. Born in Sangaria, Rajasthan to a homemaker mother and a father in the state GST department, Rahul's ambition was sparked in 6th grade during a casual TV viewing with his father. Intrigued by the protagonist's transformation, Rahul declared his intent to become a collector, not fully understanding the role but resonating with the idea of community service and respect. Rahul excelled in civil engineering at IIT Roorkee. The discussions about the UPSC civil services exam were common. Motivated by his childhood inspiration rather than peer influence, Rahul decided to attempt the UPSC after graduating in 2020. His overconfidence led to failure in his first attempt at the prelims, where he underestimated the exam's complexity and succumbed to pressure. This initial failure was a wake-up call. After a week of introspection, Rahul renewed his commitment. Although he cleared the prelims on his second attempt, severe dengue forced him to skip the mains exam. undeterred he adopted a disciplined approach for his third attempt cutting out distractions and dedicating 10 to 12 hours daily to his preparations cutting off distractions by changing his sim card and avoiding social media his efforts paid off as he achieved air 628 despite a lower than expected interview score of 124 attributed to his humble demeanor and lack of fancy english Rahul's strong performance in his optional subject mathematics scored 314 securing his success. Rahul emphasizes the importance of self belief and awareness beyond bookish knowledge encouraging others to manifest their success. His journey from a small town boy to a successful UPSC candidate is a testament to determination and resilience. Now let's take a look at this week's social media posts in Power Post. In a novel initiative to promote voter awareness, IRS officer Dr. Chitranjan Maji, additional commissioner in the Revenue Department of the Ministry of Finance in New Delhi, has collaborated with the district election officer of Thane district to create a song for the systematic voters education and electoral participation campaign. Dr. Maji, known for his creative flair, composed wrote the lyrics and lent his voice to the song with musical arrangement by the acclaimed marathi music director duo chinar mahesh the song aims to engage and educate voters on the importance of participating in the electoral process leveraging dr maji's musical talents to enhance the campaign's reach this collaboration with the deo thane district highlights an innovative approach to voter education मतदान का ये वोट का पहर छोड़ के आइए न जाइए ये शहर छोड़ के दिन ये मतदान का उंगली में वोट का दिन ये मतदान का उंगली में वोट का चाहे तुम लगा के Dr. Maji's passion for the arts traces back to his school days when he wrote poems for national events. 
Although his career initially put a hold on his creative pursuits, his posting in Delhi in 2016 reignited his passion. He spent 6 years studying Hindustani classical music under Guru Sri Shailendra Goswami despite initial doubts about his readiness his guru eventually encouraged him to perform publicly leading to his current contribution to the voters education campaign Thank you so much for watching this was all the news for this week we'll be back next week till then stay curious stay informed and stay tuned to Indian Mastermind